sorry. And of course, no oil change would be complete without the uh, obligatory cut the uh, oil filter out and take a look at it. Come off there. <clears throat> So there might be like a sparkle or two. You can definitely see some like sludge between uh, down there on the bottom. It's kind of kind of sludgy, and that's just usually like grit and crap. I mean, who knows how long? Yeah, you can see it right there on my fingertip where it's like super dark. You know, honestly, what I've found is that if it's gonna run it runs and if you're gonna have a problem you're gonna have a problem usually within the first few minutes so yeah everything's looking good as far as oil and uh, filters concerned so I'm gonna put the plug back in put a foot uh, put a filter on it you guys wondering you guys haven't seen Bob in a while Wonder how Bob's doing. He's doing, he's doing just fine. He's living that, living that best sheep life. Bob, how you doing, buddy? Bob. Yeah, we'll put oil in it and start making our list and checking it twice. Watch a video I learned, and it's great because I'm kind of getting to where we got this thing sorted out. So. You know, we've worked through all the problems and uh, we did charge the air conditioner now. I wanted to, to steal that last signal uh, from the map sensor so we can do that closed loop boost control. I have to put the inside of the car all back together now and as we're doing that, we'll try to see what we got with harness. Maybe I can feed some harness back through here and maybe we can do something to kind of uh, group this stuff at the very top up and wrap it and hold it up above so it's not just laying across the back of the bell housing. I don't basically just computer stuff. So I know it's really boring stuff to, to watch and see, but what we're going to do is we're going to grab the map sensor. So I have one of these two and a half uh, bar boys. They're relatively cheap. So I got that um, and what we'll find is that the pin on this guy, so if you hold this like this with the little tabby connector guy at the very top, uh, it goes A, B, C, and C is my uh, signal wire. And then I follow that back and that comes to the red and black wire on, uh, on the main harness. And then we follow that back because why run, we wire through the firewall when it's already ran through the firewall. So I found it on J1. It is number 23 on J1. It is still a red and black wire, uh, which is good. So what I plan on doing is depinning that, taking my also red and black wire that I got from Holly that already has a pin on it and doing like a little uh, two into one kind of action and a little menage a trois <laughs> at the map sensor and uh, throwing that guy onto uh, the can sensor so then we can feed it back through to the uh, computer for the closed loop. So it's really nothing more than depending that wire, strip, cutting it, stripping it, splicing that guy in and then feeding it over to the can system. All this stuff is super boring and uh, I know all you're seeing is talking and stuff. So it's kind of boring. I apologize. I don't know what else to do, but it's just, this is where we're at. So here we're just uh, going on inside the dash on the left hand side of the steering column. There is where I ended up mounting the Holly canvas. It's a real useful, you know, guy for the uh, money. I think uh, you get, I think eight, ins and eight outs uh, but it's it's limited I mean it's in, in what it can do but you can make it work um, like it would only output to ground is one of the deals so I needed a positive so we just use the ground on a relay and 
so we switched that and just used it to switch relay for power, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it was a challenge wiring all this stuff up, mostly just because I've never really done it before and I had to get used to the new tools and probably better, more proper techniques. And uh, yeah, I learned some stuff on this and uh, learned a lot with the Holly. It was a little bit frustrating uh, at times. And, uh, but not, not, not undoable. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay. So that's all there is to it, really. I mean, you can pull a signal. Uh, Matt's told me that those, uh, five volt signals are very robust and they're happy to share. So, uh, all you do is just whoop, right up into our input on our, uh, our can can bus boy and then we'll use that we'll set it up as uh, the sensor for our dome pressure control on the boost control so I think that is all the very last wire that we had to connect and now it'll be trying to piece this hunk of turd back together to make a, a drivable possibly a drivable vehicle We'll see. Hey everybody, welcome back to Monkey Fab. You're probably wondering like, hey Mike, what, what happened? What's the deal? What's the deal, yo? Uh, you were cranking the car and then you just went dark on us. <laughs> it, 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 quickly, it quickly turned into a, a death spiral and, and just spiraled completely out of control. And uh, here I am. So, uh, so what happened was I went to crank it and it wouldn't start. And then I just went to try and, you know, different thing. None of which being on video would be worth watching or anything. So I, I had to do a lot of YouTube, YouTubing and trying to find a way to diagnose what was going on. The car would crank, but it wouldn't start. So I pulled the spark plug. There's no fuel. So if there's no fuel and there's, you know, the injectors aren't working. The, why, why aren't the injectors working? Uh, the fuel pumps work. We're getting gas, obviously, to the fuel rail because we fixed our leaks, <laughs> and we know that it's there. We know the fuel pressure is good, so something in the software is not telling the injectors to do their job, which is usually something to do with uh, some kind of sensor, right? Like something's going on that's not letting it do it. And then the obvious thing you kind of extrapolate to is probably the some sort of timing deal, right? The, crank sensor or the cam sensor. So uh, knowing that I just kept the sensors in the engine that came with the engine, if you all remember back to when we were doing the engine and pulling apart and refreshing it up, it was only 100,000 miles, but it must have ran like, like it, it must have never shut off. The, the boards were all completely white. There was no cross hatch in them. Uh, the spark plugs, the wires were just literally melted onto the spark plugs. Uh, it was in pretty rough condition. So then I thought to myself, well, dummy, it probably ended up in the wrecking yard in the first place because the sensor went bad. So change the sensors. So I grabbed the sensors off of the old engine because I know like, hey, that's a known good. And threw the crank sensor, no problem. And then we got to the cam sensor and problem. <laughs> This guy came off and, and I spoke in tongues for, for a while. And then when English came back to me as a form of language that I could speak moderately well, I uh, was like, damn, I'm gonna have to pull the whole front end off of this guy. And that sucks because we spent all the time, you know, it's all sealed up, it's all ready to go. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is just, I busted that off, but I'm gonna try to run a uh, sheet metal screw through the sensor 
and then heat up the cover and get it warm and hope that we either get expansion or enough uh, greenness that we can just pop that guy out of there. That would be awesome. Um, and then I wouldn't have to redo the whole front end. If that fills miserably, then we still have to redo the whole front end and I'm just probably wasting a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. Uh, if you guys got a way that you like to get your broken cam sensors out of the front uh, timing cover, <laughs> it's better than this way, then I, I sure would enjoy to hear it. I'm sure everybody who's ever had this problem would love to hear it. And uh, why not put it in the comments? I, I will do me no good because I'm all already have suffered through this, but sure, why not? And we'll go ahead and start working on this. Okay, well, this is this is the look of defeat. So the I heating it up. <laughs> I can spin it around inside the hole. There's nothing to grab onto. The uh, self tapper one just kind of it didn't really catch anything. It just kind of went in and hauled it out the hole and then. The one that I did to get detached, uh, I feel like it grabbed. I think that's because it went in between the fucking sensor and, <laughs> and ruined, ruined the front timing cover. Luckily, we got like five or six of these things laying around, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. But this is the look of defeat and frustration. <laughs> and, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So I'm going to focus my, uh, my negative emotions right now and I'm going to use them to rip the entire front end off of this thing. It is, I think, five or six o'clock at night on a Friday, and I'm gonna have it done before I quit. So we're gonna see if refocusing and staying positive works. Cheer us on, guys, Woohoo! So how's positivity gone for me? <laughs> we're just working, we're staying, we're staying busy, we're working. I, I, I always see people struggling with the crankshafts, getting crankshafts on and off. Never had a problem, comma, until today. <laughs> this thing just bought me tooth and nail. I figured I'd get all the little bolts and stuff from underneath, you know, hoses off and whatnot. And, uh, and we've been doing that and we got the, uh, finally got the pulley off. It was, uh, I've never had it be that difficult before, but it was. So, um, just, just speaking in tongues and uh, getting frustrated, which is funny because I, I think about it and I think about what I used to accomplish when I was a young guy back in like, say, 1990 working on Volkswagens with just a set of monkey wrenches and how I used to, how hard it was uh, and, and how many workarounds I had to do just to get things done. And then I realized, I was like, Mike, 18 year old you would think you were a bitch. So, uh, I'm gonna refocus that and uh, again positive up and we're gonna finish getting this front end ripped off All right, let's check this out Bam Hello Hello uh, I did destroy it so you can see probably can't see but that that great self tapper idea was is uh <laughs> about as solid as most of my ideas. So I just stayed positive and everything just went my way. It was like smooth as butter. Okay, that guy's out of there. And uh, here's our sensor wires that were going to our crank signal, crank trigger signal. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't see them there and they got kind of toasty, but it doesn't look like we went through the through any of the wires, I'll pull them out individually and check them real good and uh, put some sheathing back over them. But everything's fine, nothing we can't fix, nothing that we aren't lucky enough to already have the tools to fix what we got. So we got the, uh, I'm gonna go grab a, uh, actually I'm done because it's late <laughs> and I accomplished what I promised myself I would accomplish. And yeah, so just put the sensor back in and button everything back up and wow that only set us back a few hours. <laughs>